Hey there, and welcome to my first Factorio train tutorial. Uh, today we're going to go over junction spacing, train size or length, how to space out your factories, and uh, amount of trains on a network and how that affects uh, the rest of your, your train tracks and your network and your junctions. Uh, after this tutorial, the next one will probably be about signaling, and I will actually uh, give a basic tutorial on junction signaling, but that is not what we're going to do today. So. Uh, someone on a previous video of mine uh, actually asked some very good questions uh, and kind of suggested I make a tutorial on this, which uh, was a really good idea. So, you know, they asked about, you know, where do you put intersections? How do you space them out on a large scale for building large scale train networks? Uh, you know, is there some rhyme or reason to how or where you should space your factories? Are there some you should put closer to, to each other? Uh, you know, what problems may occur with more trains that you may not experience with a fewer amount of trains? Um, and then, you know, for train size, uh, is, it, is it best to just do all one train size or have various sizes depending on what the trains carry? And, uh, and then how should the train size affect your rail uh, design and whole train network design? So I'm on my uh, sending supporters to space map here because this is the best example I think that I have probably even better than setting up a test world for this uh, because this is a massive train network and a massive map in general you can see here and I have a lot of different train things going on and I've utilized a lot of uh, techniques a lot of which were actually new to me uh, but we're going to start with junctions here and junction spacing because this is actually really important uh, so let me just get this out of the way. I'm not going to get go into any are you, any of the debate about using double-headed trains or loops or not. Uh, these concepts should pretty much apply regardless of if you're using single-headed trains, double-headed trains, loops, non-loops, whatever. Uh, because with these junctions, uh, you know, at some point, I would imagine you're going to have junctions in your network uh, to you know split off another main line or maybe split off to a factory itself, like most of these do. But the important thing here is how should you space these out and uh, it took me a while to you know learn this and get used to it but it should uh it should kind of become a good practice to uh to have these junctions spaced at the length of your longest train so you want any junctions you have where again rather that uh, rather if i can talk whether they are spaced um or placed for a main line or just a factory split off um, you want the distance between uh, one junction and the next junction to be a minimum space of your longest train length. So in this case, I've used this as spacing because this uh, particular train network, I have several actually segregated networks here, which I'll get into in a minute, but this particular network, uh, the longest train on here is a 363. And you'll notice I've spaced this out. We have three locomotives, six wagon, three locomotives, 363. Um, I've spaced this out and shown you here, these junctions are pretty much exactly that far apart. You can make them slightly more far apart if you'd like, um, but at a minimum, uh, it is good practice to have your junctions uh, this far apart. And the reason is so that one entire train can fit between here. So like this train, for example, if he had had to have stopped at this signal, right? So actually, if I just place something like that temporarily, you can see this guy will fit here. In, inside this entire junction, which means he is no, he's not blocking any traffic um, in this junction or the junction to the right. And this is why it's very important to have this spacing in here um, so that an entire train can fit in between junctions without blocking the junction in front of him or behind him. Uh, and, and this just depends on your train length. You know, if you're using three ten threes, then that should be your spacing. If you're using, you know, one fours uh, or one one ones, whatever it may be, whatever your longest train on the network is, that is the minimum spacing um, you'll want to try to space your junctions. And you can see here, all of these here are all spaced the same way. A three six three can fit in every single space in between these junctions. You know, more than one can fit here. Same with here and here uh, and here as well. Um, same practice everywhere, even with the junctions going other directions. So. That's kind of a general rule for spacing out your junctions is uh, is just make sure that you leave uh, you know amount of space that is at least the size of your longest train on that network. Now, in regards to where to put factories, how to space out your factories with uh, your train network, that depends on mostly I would say 
preference and how you're designing your factory in general, but you will generally probably want to avoid having it's it's actually interesting um because on the one hand you may want to avoid having like one type of factory say green circuits um on one part of your map and then having whatever they supply for example red circuits on the entire opposite side uh because that is you know that's requiring your trains to run a massive distance and potentially interfering with other trains going back and forth between that area where if you just put them close to each other uh you wouldn't necessarily have that problem however on the other hand you do want to actually leave a lot of space for some stuff in your network because if you try to cram stuff really close together um, you may not be able to do this type of junction spacing which again is obviously very important um, but on top of that your rails in general will be very cramped and uh, probably just cause throughput issues and possible jams even if your signaling is totally fine Apparently we're being attacked, that's fine. Um, but if we take a look at the map here, one tactic I've actually utilized, and if you're going on a very large scale uh, factory and base, I would actually recommend this. This is the first time I've actually used this type of method, but so far it has worked out beautifully. And this is using kind of segregate, segregated or um, dedicated internal train networks. And what I mean by this, now this looks like a lot of spaghetti, but if we try to separate this out a little bit, You'll notice these green circuit factories here never actually, aside from this one, never actually, um, or aside from this one rather, never actually go onto the main line. Every single one of these factories is sent directly to their consumer. So uh, these two, for example, here, you can follow their rails and they are both go down. And uh, this is actually the iron line for it, but it's the same concept. These rails go down and both supply this first blue circuit factory. Right? They never even enter the main line and never uh, interfere with any other circuit trains going anywhere else. They never interfere with the circuit trains going to red circuits or the other blue build or speed modules or these red circuits or anything on the main line. And this is the case for all of these. Uh, now, if you're not going a huge factory, this is certainly not required if you'd like to do it. Obviously, um, you know that's your choice and it probably would only help even on smaller scales, but on larger scales, I think this is actually the best way to go because when you get these massive factories with huge amount of trains, there's over 400 trains on this map right now doing stuff. And if they were to all be sharing this main line, it would be a constant traffic jam. You know, it would be like being in the middle of New York City or something. Uh, it, it would just be unbelievable. And, and this junction spacing would no longer really help because it would just be trains backed up just forever along the entire main line because trying to cram 400 trains into this uh, size of main line is obviously going to be an issue. Uh, now expanding your main line, this is another topic, can help somewhat, but it doesn't help as much as you may think. Um, going from a two lane, so one each direction, to a four lane or from a four lane to an eight lane is not actually a hundred percent increase in throughput. Uh, it actually is diminishing returns like the more you do it and in some cases it can be worse because the larger your main line is the larger your junctions are going to be and the junctions are actually the slowest part of your train main line typically and making those longer means that trains are spending more time in the slowest part of your train network right so it doesn't instantly work to just add more lanes if, if it's not working, right? If, 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 you're, if you're having backups and stuff, um, instantly adding more lanes is not necessarily going to fix it. Now, in terms of train size, this is a very, uh, very much personal preference and somewhat dependent on your factory itself. Uh, for pretty much all, uh, I'm, I'm trying to think of the word, pretty much all um, intermediate and final products, I am using 363s. My OR is 3103s, but that is actually on a completely separate network down on the bottom down here, which never even uh, touches anything up top. And that is another uh, example of the segregated networks. Uh, you actually will have quite a lot of OR trains typically, even regardless of your factory size. You know, OR trains will usually be probably one of the highest number of trains you have. And uh, separating those out can be a little bit difficult 
but in the end, it can actually help you a ton because I would imagine that probably about a third or half of my trains are ore trains right now. Um, and having them uh, not on this main line is actually extremely helpful and clears up a ton of potential traffic. Uh, so I've done 363s for almost everything um, that's not ore aside from oil, some oil products. Uh, actually, believe it or not, most of my oil products are 363s, even the barrels. And this may seem ridiculous, and it is slightly ridiculous, but it actually makes it very easy. So to answer the question of, you know, should I make all my trains the same size? Should I vary them depending on the material? Some of this is personal preference, uh, but I have actually found in this playthrough that having almost all the trains the same size, even things that you wouldn't think should be the same size, has helped quite a lot just because it makes the builds and makes the track design and stackers and stuff a lot easier because I don't have to think, you know, I have to fit a 222 in here, I have to fit a 363 in here and a 242 in this build and somehow make it work and look good and not have issues. Um, now, of course, these carry an absolutely absurd amount of uh, products, but, and they take a long time to load, but that means that they can, uh, it, it's actually lowers the amount of train traffic you have because uh, it's loading for a while, but then when it actually gets there, it's enough materials to supply the factory for, you know, however long, maybe it's two minutes, maybe it's five minutes, and maybe it's 10 minutes in some cases, which means that you're not having these trains leaving constantly from every build and, uh, you know, making your network super busy. Now, some trains like the light oil trains are one, two, ones, or the loop trains um, down here, one is not here, but this is a, uh, actually, I think a one, 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 um, just a one locomotive, one fluid tanker and another locomotive. And those are just smaller, um, just kind of by choice. So it's really your preference. Um, I would say in general though, keeping them the same size is helpful. Uh, even, even if it seems absurd, like for circuits or something, you know, one of these can carry 48,000 uh, red circuits or green circuits and half that amount for uh, blue circuits. And that's a lot, but the same thing applies, you know, sure, it's going to take, you know, maybe four minutes to load and it's a huge amount of materials, but when it gets to its destination, you know, that may supply the factory it's going to for 10 minutes, which means that that's, you know, 10 minutes where this train isn't on the main line. Right? So that's kind of the thing with size. And I've just put down some common train sizes here. 363 is fairly common or 262. Again, you don't have to go double headed. Um, probably the same thing would apply maybe a 36 or a 26 or a 24. Um, in this case, 242 is a very common size. Um, just because you know, it, it moves quick, it accelerates quick, but it carries a fair amount of cargo. Uh, you know, a one, two, one is another fairly common size or a one, two. Um, you know, all these sizes can kind of be uh, interchanged between double-headed and single-headed. Uh, you know, 310, 3, if you want very large trains, um, are are now quite common. Before, they were a little bit slower, but with rocket fuel um, now actually affecting train uh, acceleration and such, it becomes a lot more viable. Uh, so there's some common train sizes, even 111s or just 11. One uh, if you want little small kind of transport trains, uh, PAX trains for uh, passenger transport, you know, can be whatever size you want, uh, you know, could just be one locomotive, uh, although, well, if you're using a single headed system with loops and stuff, this would work. But if you're using a double headed system, you will want at least one on the other side, probably, uh, you know, you could even do two, two, depending how big you want them. Uh, a lot of it does come down to personal preference. And then uh, another question uh, the person proposed was, is there a benefit to having circuit networks running through your rails? Most of my rails, some of these are disconnected because I just haven't gotten around to doing it yet, but most of my rails have circuit wires going through them. Currently, they don't do anything, but if you ever have any like inclination that you may possibly in the future want to have something in one part of your factory uh, read or controlled by another part, it would be very advantageous to include wired uh, poles throughout your train network because this would allow me, for example, to maybe, I don't know, maybe I want like a little control hub um, just over here, for example, or, or some light display. And I want to read how much oil I have. Well, without wires, there's no way to actually do that. And if I hadn't put wires in my blueprint for this, um, I would have to manually walk through and wire 
<laughs> down the entire train line. So including these, if you use rail blueprints, um, can be very helpful because now if I wanted to do that, these all have wires still. So I could simply go over here to my oil base, hook up what I want to hook up, maybe the, uh, I don't know, maybe the tanks here, just hook them here and then hook them to the main network and then come back over to this section and wire them just straight from one of these poles down into, you know, combinators and lights for light display and I'm good to go. I may never use this, I may, but having it here doesn't hurt at all. Um, in fact, in some cases, I think it really looks cool aside from where the poles are a little derpy, but um, running circuit networks through your rail lines, I would say is advantageous uh, if you do set up blueprints. If you haven't really gotten to blueprinting rails yet, then probably don't need to worry about it because it would be quite a bit of extra work um, if you're trying to do it manually when you set up rails, but uh, it definitely can be helpful in the future. And then last is, uh, you know, how should uh, train size affect the design of the network? And that kind of just brings us back to the junctions. Uh, you know, for whatever train size you're using, make sure your junctions are spaced for that length um, for the longest one you have. Um, you know, s bigger trains are going to, again, carry more cargo and, uh, you know, maybe not be quite as zippy as smaller trains, which means that, uh, you know, maybe you don't need quite as big of a train uh, mainline if you're using larger trains because you will have less of them. So, you know, so for example, I was transporting everything in this map by 242s or uh, 121s. They would even still, even with all my ore separated, there would be a ton of trains on here because at the rate I'm consuming materials, I would need a massive amount of little trains transporting stuff back and forth. Now, sure, they would be super zippy, but they're not going to carry much. So this four lane would actually be quite crowded. With this size of train that I am using, I could probably actually get away with just a two lane system. And that would apply for you as well. So the larger trains you have um, means you may need less lines. Again, it depends on how your system's designed. Uh, but that is something to keep in mind. So hopefully this has been helpful. Just kind of a discussion and examples of what I've experienced and uh, and hopefully you've learned something uh, from this. If you have any questions, definitely leave them down in the comments. I will do my best to answer them or other people uh, will as well. You guys are really great about helping each other out. Uh, but there you go. Uh, definitely. So conclusion, separated rail networks, um, segregated rail networks and internal networks can be really helpful if, if you want to do that. If you don't want to do that, uh, then it's totally fine. Just make sure that you're uh, your rail network can handle the amount of trains you're trying to throw through it. And regardless of which way you do it, your junctions uh, should be spaced a minimum distance um, that is equal to your longest train on that network so that a train can fit between junctions without blocking any part of the junction for any other trains going through it. And uh, in factory spacing is pretty much up to you, but having them close together can be beneficial. Uh, but at the same time, spacing out parts of your network can be very helpful as well so your rails aren't too crowded. Uh, just a very quick end example is, uh, you know, the rocket fuel and for uh, the rocket silos is fairly close to the silos, but yet not, uh, not too close to other stuff and not too close to the silos, right? I didn't stick it like in here where it would have just been a complete mess of rails. These are actually getting pretty close to that. Um, so kind of just a medium distance is usually good. But there you go, guys. I hope this was helpful. Uh, thank you so much for watching. If it was helpful, I'd appreciate a like. It helps uh, other people find the video. And uh, leave any thoughts you have down in the comments. But until next time, I look forward to seeing you all, and do take care.